Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Space Engineers, version 1.190.1. Uh, this is episode number 21. In our last episode, we got our spacecraft built. It's kind of a colony ship, really, uh, seeing as it has a survival kit attached to it and a drill attached to it. Basically, has the ability to go out and gather resources and get us started in kind of the same manner as the respawn pod, just a little bit more uh, controllable and maneuverable and overall useful. Um, but in the last episode, we got it all built up, and then we ran out of gas in it trying to get it up here on the connector and crashed it and destroyed a bunch of stuff, and I went ahead and cut the episode off there because it was already running super long. Um, but in between episodes, I have gotten it all repaired, I have gotten it all fueled up, and we are now ready to go up to space. Our goal today is going to be primarily getting to space and then doing a little bit of exploration, see if we can discover some uh, ice reserves or some, some ice that we can use to replenish our reserves and get ourselves back to uh, fully fueled and basically be able to, to use that ice deposit as a uh, forward operating base in space uh, to find the other resources that we want and maybe even start working on a space station. We're not going to do all that before we come back because we do have lots of stuff that we would actually like to do uh, over at the rover, uh, the mine construction rover. Um, we're going to do all that to get get us started. Uh, did do some more drilling so that we had enough ice to get ourselves refilled here. So before we lift off, I am going to retract the drills because I'm pretty sure that they're now fully extended um, and get that all shut down and then we will head off as soon as my game stops lagging. Which it does not seem immediately inclined to do. Come on. There we go. Uh, extender piston, yeah, is fully extended. So we can come up here to our drilling pistons and reverse those. And we can't do that because some of them are going forward and some are going backward. I was thinking about speeding them up, but I'm not going to do that. It won't take that long. So you can see our cockpit is full of ice, our basic refinery is full of a bunch of stuff, our small cargo container even is full of a bunch of stuff, including some extra ice here. Our large cargo container has a ton of ingots in it, and I'm going to move this down into the large cargo container because that's where it really needs to be, as well as everything out of the survival kit because that's not helpful. Flip the order on these because I want to get the stone out of there first. Yeah, we don't want anything in our local survival kit either. So this is all of our local stuff. This is our local O2H2 generator. It is full. Our other local O2H2 generator. It is full. Our connector even is full. Our drill is not full because as soon as we stick anything in there, it's going to immediately export it to the, the base since we're connected. So that's not actually useful to do. What I will do, though, is refill our hydrogen bottle. Grab our oxygen bottle. And stick the rest of our bits from our repair job back in the small cargo container while we're still waiting on this drill to retract. 
picking up a little bit of additional ice here, looks like. Come on, lag. You're not funny. Yeah, and I actually turned this off so that it wouldn't try to pull the ice out of our colonizer's cargo. That does mean we're going to have a little bit of surplus ice in the base and not quite as much hydrogen as we could have. You'll notice our hydrogen tank is not entirely full for the base. We've only got three lights on there. That's all right. That's still quite a bit. 81%, 81.3%. We are using that to refill our own uh, hydrogen tank on the colonizer. Then we've got our hydrogen engine here, which is occasionally being used to kick up our power production when it's needed. So we are mostly retracted there. We can go ahead and turn the drills off because we're not going to be picking up anything else. And that will stop the rotor and stop the drills. And now we're ready to go. Uh, so we'll turn the batteries on. Turn the O2H2 generators on. Turn the hydrogen tanks off the stockpile. Turn our engines on. Turn our uh, gyro on. And then turn our connector off. And why do we not have enough power here? I had enough power to get it up here. Alright, let's relock that. Let's check this again. It is possible we have too much weight. Of course, now we're sucking this out to fill the base tank. So I'm going to turn those back off. And I'm going to refill those, actually, even though we are apparently too heavy to lift off. wait and turn those on when we're in flight. Alright, so all of our engines are turned on. Yeah, there's just too much weight here, apparently. Alright. Let's see if maybe offloading the ice in the O2H2 generators is enough to get us moving. That's about 5,000 kilograms. Should help. Yeah, now we can lift off. So we don't have quite as much extra ice capacity as we did but we've still got a decent amount here because we've got a full medium cargo container. I will go ahead and turn the O2H2 generators on. That's going to increase our power consumption, but we should be all right. We'll still have uh, plenty of power for at least getting up into orbit. Uh, I also set up our toolbar. You can see the first toolbar there is our docking controls, the connector lock and unlock, power, battery, O2H2 generators, hydrogen tanks, stockpile mode, uh, hydrogen engines, gyros and landing gear on two here we actually have our launch controls and I'm going to use those in just a minute um, some of those are or one of three and four is all of the hydrogen no is the the rear um, hydrogen thruster the main big one there um, the other one is the reverse hydrogen thrusters and then one and two there are our thrust overrides so now that we've got some height I am going to go ahead and turn us upward and I'm going to start increasing our thrust override 
and I'm going to make sure I press the right one here. Yeah, three is our, our reverse thrusters because we don't actually want to be applying any reverse thrust now. Um, that way we can leave the inertial dampeners on so we can keep ourselves straight and level. And then I'm going to actually use the forward key to get us up to speed and then use the thrust override to keep us about maximum speed. We don't want to quite be at max speed because once you're at max speed you're basically burning more fuel than you have to um, but if you keep it just below max speed then you are using your fuel as efficiently as possible so I want to let that drop a little bit and just kind of increase and decrease as needed we're gonna start pulling out of the gravity well here and we'll be able to use even less fuel to, to keep ourselves at speed as we get up higher in the air We're also going to be getting lighter as we process through that ice to refill our tanks and actually use the hydrogen in that tank. So generally speaking, we're going to be able to reduce the amount of thrust override that we use as we continue to climb. Again, once we get into space, our primary task is going to be finding ice. And anything else that we find while we're up there, obviously we will continue to bookmark because everything is useful. Especially because carting ore, even ingots back and forth from the base or from the Earth-like planet to space is a big use of energy, whether it's hydrogen or atmospheric thrusters or ion thrusters or whatever. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of energy to do that, so getting stuff already in space is definitely the more efficient way to do it. Um, you can turn your dampeners off entirely and get yourself just a very small amount of speed to start going and then just drift from one asteroid to another. So it's definitely a much more energy efficient way of collecting resources, even though it can take longer depending on how fast you end up accelerating yourself to, compared to uh, surface resource collection. Of course, we've got ourselves a nice little mine construction rover to do our resource collection on the Earth-like planet at this point, and convenient access to all the resources that we need in the short term, but especially for platinum, uranium, and uh, that's really the most important ones, but again, ice, just because that will allow us to kind of scale out exponentially because once we can find ice in space we can refuel in space and we can pretty much do whatever we want to from that point so we're down to 0.36 planetary gravity we've got about another 24 or 23,000 meters to go and I am looking forward to watching White Lightning's Lunar Co-op episode this evening so I am going to try to be done in time to switch over to that uh, and hopefully still get a decent length episode uploaded before uh, my usually scheduled premiere time. But I got pretty far ahead recording episodes and then got to the 20th one and did that, you know, extra length special one. There's our asteroid starting to spawn in. That one will probably still be in the gravity well, though, so we're not going to aim straight for that one yet. We want to make sure that we're at at least 40,000 meters, which is outside of the gravity well for the Earth-like planet. I'm not sure if they're different depending on which planet you're on. I think they are. But 40,000 meters is where the gravity well extends to, give or take, for the Earth-like planet. So by the time we get that high, we will be at zero P gravity. Anyway, I got a little bit ahead, and so I took a day or two off and turned into an extra day or two and an extra day or two after that and then I ended up not having an episode pre-uploaded for this evening so I'm doing it a little bit last minute I don't expect the quality to degrade much below its usual awful level that I'm sure you've grown to know and love you can see we're staying around 97 98 meters per second down there in the lower left corner 
and we've been able to reduce our thrust override from a high of around 300 and something kilonewtons now down to 48 we will eventually get to zero and uh, then we'll turn our reverse thrusters back on our main thruster off and we will be drifting until we get into space that one that's dead ahead of us might actually be good that might be outside the gravity well or we might sail uncomfortably close to it while still inside the gravity well and it might take a little bit of wandering around to find ice so depending on how we're doing uh, I may point us in the direction of uh, a different asteroid and then start moving and go ahead and cut the episode off and come back in once we've actually found our ice but we will at least get into space and out of the gravity well here before I cut the episode and at least start exploring one or two asteroids we're now down to 24 kilonewtons I think the next step is actually going to be turning this off entirely um, you can see we're slowing down but gravity is going to be going down a lot faster our weight's going to be going down a lot faster so I'm not worried about it if we go below 80 I might punch it back up for a second just to get back up to full ish speed but at the end of the day we're, we're getting towards the point where we're just going to have to spend more energy slowing down once we're outside the gravity well so letting gravity do some of that work for us so we just kind of inch outside the gravity well is really the most efficient launch profile we've got about 8,000 meters to go and all three of these asteroids look like they might be outside the gravity well and fairly close to each other so those will definitely be our first exploration targets assuming I'm right about the gravity well thing our deceleration has slowed down in between lagginess of my game starting to speed up again had a drone spawn in and out at maximum distance there I'm not super duper worried about drones because they don't tend to seek you out certainly not at, at this range and I think my antenna is turned down relatively low if they detect your antenna they'll be more inclined to come bother you but given what we're actually doing up here I think I am going to turn this down even further so this is really just going to be about you know having access to the ship when we're standing outside of it down to 0 0.07 p gravity and I might have been wrong this uh, asteroid might still be in the gravity well which is a little bit inconvenient means we're gonna have to do some hunting but that's alright we're not super close to it either so that's that's fine alright I am gonna go ahead and disable now because we've only got a, about 2,000 meters until we're outside the gravity well entirely so we'll go ahead and let gravity start to slow us down some and you can see we are going past this asteroid it looks like so it might be outside the gravity well based on you know the angle that we launched at but there are, there are plenty of other fish in that sea point zero six point zero five it's a little over forty thousand I think it might be actually 42 now that I think about it but we are sailing past a couple of asteroids that are very clearly still in the gravity well of the Earth-like planet so we're not going to be targeting those because we will have to continue to use fuel just to keep from falling back into the ground we don't want to do that there we go it's about 41 and a half it looks like alright so now that we're completely outside the gravity well P gravity is now zero we will turn our reverse thrusters back on and they will quick, quickly slow us to a stop and it looks like that one's probably back in the gravity well that one's probably back in the gravity well that one's probably close but that's the moon that's farther off than it looks that is about I think 200 kilometers so we could fly it but there's really no point to doing that certainly not at this point um, because of the resources that we're looking for I mean we will go to the moon at some point we will go to, to all of the other you know planets in the in the solar system at some point but I'm not in a huge rush to get to the moon because this is not a scarce resources mod or anything like that where we have to go to the moon to get certain things 
uh, the way uh, Kanajashi, I think it is, plays it, which is it, definitely a cool way to play it. It definitely seems very interesting to play it that way, but we're not playing it that way. Um, so I will probably wait until I have a jump drive, and then we'll just do some blind jumps to get there. Anyway, Asteroids. This one honestly seems like probably our most promising candidate in terms of being close. So I will turn off our reverse thrusters again. You can just turn off inertial dampeners. The The downside to turning off inertial dampeners is that you have really no control over whether or not you're moving straight. So I'm just going to turn off the reverse thrusters. That way if I do steer, it'll slow us down some to steer, but it will also... Uh, keep us pointed the, or keep us moving in the direction I'm pointing. Do want to aim slightly off center in case we uh, activate our reverse thrusters too late so we don't crash into the asteroid. We can instead um, just sail past it and then reverse course. And we've got enough time here that I will keep us running for a little bit and hopefully be able to make it all the way to this asteroid before I need to cut off and go watch some other YouTuber play the game better than me. Um, but for the time being, we will stick around here and watch ourselves fly in. Uh, we will also go ahead and shut down our main thruster. Now we'll be accelerating a little bit more slowly when we try to move forward, but we will also be using a lot less hydrogen. And because we've slowed down our hydrogen consumption rate, you can see there that our hydrogen tank is actually 100% full again. Uh, it looks like we are probably not quite almost out of we're almost out of ice we've used up all the ice in the in the cargo connector the cargo container and the in the cockpit but we do still have ice in the o2 h2 generator that is kind of slowly seeping out there mostly at this point to give ourselves oxygen in the cockpit um rather than to uh run any of the thrusters because they're not actually engaged at this particular point even though we've got our inertial dampeners on we're not turning we're not accelerating we're not decelerating so we're just kind of coasting along got nine hours on our batteries we can recharge our batteries on the fly by turning on our hydrogen engines which we have two of but they will definitely burn through our, our hydrogen supplies a lot faster so until i secure a new supply of ice i do not want to do that if it can be avoided Saw a drone spawn in and out there again at kind of the max distance. Um, it would be bad if they got too close because we are not armed here. The only thing we've got is our personal assault rifle. We'd have to jump out to, to use that. Um, we do still have a survival kit down at the station at the base. So, I mean, this wouldn't be the end of the playthrough by any stretch of the imagination if we did get killed and our ship blown up. Um, but with our antenna range turned down like it is, really they'd have to be pretty close to even notice that we're here and uh, change course to come towards us and harass us. So I'm not overly worried about them, certainly not at, at that kind of distance. We've got one now that's 10 kilometers and getting further away, and they're just despawned. I guess it depends on what kind of drone it is, whether or not it uh, despawns at 10 or 15 or 20. We are pulling up on this asteroid here. Now the size of the asteroid is not really an indicator of resource richness. Um, I'm sure there will be some kind of deposit here, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be varied deposits to the point where we can definitely be assured that we'll have ice here. I don't think it works that way. I think it's more like there's, you know, one or two, maybe three different types of ore that will spawn in each kind of asteroid field here. And this is a little field because some of these other ones here are relatively small, kind of in the vicinity of this one rather than attached to it. But now that we are getting close, we will go ahead and flip on our reverse thrusters. And now that we're slowed down, I'm going to turn off inertial dampeners so that we can kind of spin around and get a look at this thing. I don't know exactly how close we are because there's no real way of telling that. Um, you only get an altimeter in the uh, words in the uh, gravity wells. I think there might be some kind of programming shenanigans you can do with a camera to tell you how far away uh, a voxel is but obviously we don't have that set up here and I've never actually done it so I don't know for sure that that works um, but I think we are relatively close we do want to kind of move a little closer but now that we're slow enough we can uh, kind of inch a little bit in the actual direction of the asteroid rather than trying to go past it because I'm confident that we can slow down quickly our suit lights are on so if we uh, get into the shadow here and we get close enough, we will be able to see what's going on. But actually, our ore detector will be useful before 
that particular mechanism of exploration is useful. And that does all kind of look mostly like stone there, rather than uh, anything special. So we're just going to kind of spin around this thing and hope that our ore detector triggers. Now we are using a small grid ore detector. So we're going to have to be relatively close up to see anything. And we do still want to be kind of careful not to bump into it. We're going pretty slow, so we might not damage anything, but it's still not a risk I would prefer to take. We don't have any spare components. Um, we can easily drill for stone up here and use the survival kit to convert it and make ourselves some spare components, but not all of them. We can't make metal grids. We can't make large tubes or small tubes. We can't make power cells. Not without building ourselves at least a basic assembler. So we do want to be careful with the ship. Now, given the max speed thing, you know, a little bit of a hack, I guess, uh, we could, if worse comes to worse, kind of point ourselves at the base and use our jetpack to get ourselves back into the gravity while heading in the right direction and then just use the jetpack primarily to slow us down and stop. Um, but I'm going to try to avoid that as well. Ooh, looks like we got a deposit of something there, maybe. That looks like it's a different color. I'm pretty sure it's not ice, but it's looks like it's something. And I would be fairly happy to find a uranium deposit. Is that a thing? No, maybe that's not a thing. Just a weird shadow. Oh well. There is fairly reliably at least something on all of these asteroids, so I'm kind of surprised we haven't found anything yet. But again, we're using a small grid ore detector, so the range is, is limited. And it will take some cruising around uh, to get within range of anything. I'm pretty sure that's all shadowing. Especially now that I've confirmed that that one was. But we're now close enough that we can see our suit lights are illuminating in front of us. Putting some legit spotlights on here might not have been a bad idea. Is that a thing? I don't think so, but I'm going to head down this direction anyway. This is an advantage to exploring smaller asteroids is that it's easier to cover all the ground and know that you've you've looked at it and you've exhausted the potential. And a potential disadvantage to our ship design here and that we are very long is that, you know, me sitting here swinging around like this trying to look around, it's possible I could bump into something. But as long as I'm facing in the direction of the asteroid, I think we're pretty safe. I am not seeing a whole lot here in terms of deposits. I mean, I'm not seeing anything here in terms of deposits. Shadows here are definitely tricky. Is this something? Looks like it might be gold or nickel. Nickel. 
people. Is it over here too? I mean, that's pretty clearly a discoloration. Yeah, that's nickel too. All right, so we'll go ahead and mark that. That's not how it works. Alright, unfortunately I'm out of time. But we've discovered some nickel at least. So we will. I will continue to explore this asteroid a little bit between episodes. See if I can find some ice around here or, you know, on another asteroid. Either way. Um, I don't ultimately care where I find it as long as it's not too far away, but we've got plenty of hydrogen um, and therefore we have plenty of power because our uh, hydrogen will enable us to refill our power. So uh, we're pretty good on those fronts. Um, in any case, uh, subscribe to see if we find something relatively shortly. I expect that we will, um, but I'll have done that by the next episode. We will refill our ice and uh, head back to the, the surface. I might actually go ahead and do all the scouting that we're going to need and uh, find ourselves some uranium and platinum as well. Um, but I will bring us back once I find ice just so that I'll be able to, to show you the refill and recharge and... Uh, Maybe uh, we'll do some scouting then on camera to see if we can find uranium and platinum at least, as well as you know anything else that happens to come up in our search like this nickel did. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you will subscribe and catch us next time. Um, likes, comments, and verbal abuse are encouraged.